Welcome everybody. So today I'm going to bring you guys a brand new movie review. This is going to be for Terminator Salvation, which stars Christian Bale and Sam Worthington as the lead roles. Christian Bale being John Connor and Sam Worthington being this new model of a Terminator. This movie is directed by Nick G, who is, I think this is one of the first few films that I actually knew of his at the time. This movie is really interesting. You know, when I first saw this movie, I was a little bit mad leaving the theater. I was like, this isn't Terminator. This actually kind of sucks. And over the years, I've kind of grown to actually like this movie. And I I've kind of come to terms with what this movie was trying to be. I was really hoping for, you know, the future war setting that we saw in Terminator 2 Judgment Day with James Cameron, where you kind of got the post-apocalyptic scene, which this movie does take place in a post-apocalyptic uh, Los Angeles, but this movie is completely different from the James Cameron version with the future war setting. In the future war setting for James Cameron's movie, you got, you know, hunter killer drones with, you know, purple laser weapons shooting at guys on the backs of trucks with like machine guns firing at people. The movie just felt completely different from the lore of what the Terminator Terminator 2 Judgment Day kind of set up with the future war setting and I was a little bit unhappy leaving the film because I'm like, I get it. If you're going to have, you know, a future war setting, sometimes the good guys aren't going to have the best tech and probably Terminators would have had better technology than John Connor and team would have had in the post-apocalyptic setting that they're going for. But for me personally, I felt like they should have used sort of the tropes that James Cameron kind of set up where the good guys were kind of outnumbered and the Terminators were more advanced and had better weaponry and they're still able to defeat them because that was the whole point of that film and that's the whole point of this movie. But basically what happens in this film is Marcus Wright is convicted of a crime. He is sentenced to death, which I think is kind of stupid. They, they kind of start off at this point because later on you find out that, oh, he's a new Terminator. Spoiler alert, like it would have been cool if they kind of revealed this over time in sort of like flashback forms instead of just going right away and say, hey, this guy is kind of a Terminator because we already kind of suspected that he was going to be the new Terminator, especially since James Cameron, before the film's release, kind of approached Sam Worthington. It was kind of promoting him as to be the next candidate, kind of like Arnold Schwarzenegger was in the first Terminator film, as well as T2 Judgment Day. And I think that Sam Worthington does a really good job of portraying what was, in fact, in the original Terminator franchise, while still doing a new take on this, because he's sort of like a human hybrid mixed with Terminator. And I, I really like that idea of the fact that, you you know, you later find out that, oh, he's actually one of the bad guys and that they did this in terms to try and assassinate John Connor, which is pretty much the plot of every single Terminator film is that they're sending machines back in time to assassinate John Connor and then in the future, they're still trying to do the same thing. So basically you find out that Marcus Wright is actually a Terminator. You know, John Connor is, he doesn't care for this Terminator. He actually wants to kill this guy, even though he's kind of helped the rest of the team out throughout the entire film, especially Kyle Reese, who he meets at the beginning of the film. This movie is fantastic in terms of the production design as as well as keeping with the themes of Terminator. This has the Hunter Killer's back and there's a really cool design and it's a lot larger in terms of scale than the James Cameron Hunter Killers. I think those are pretty cool, especially that scene where you see the Hunter Killer go in between the buildings and it causes the buildings to collapse. I thought that was pretty cool. The fight scene in the beginning with the Terminator who has a Gatling gun strapped to its arm is pretty cool and he's just taking things out um, as Marcus Wright is walking through the remains of post-apocalyptic Los Angeles. I thought that was pretty sweet. There's a really cool bike chase where you got these new Terminators that are basically like motorcycles. They're pretty much decked out in black and they kind of zoom in and out of the wreckage of the cars and stuff and they're chasing after Kyle Reese as well as Sam Worthington. This leads to the scene with the bridge where you got the hunter killer that's on one side and you got the truck that they're driving in on the other side and then the hunter killer kind of tries to kill them by taking out the bridge and everything. I thought that was pretty sweet. There's little moments like that throughout this movie where you got cool action sequences happening throughout the film. There's this scene where one of the main female characters tries to break out Sam Worthington's character. She's played by Moon Bloodgood and basically she sees the good side of the Terminator and is trying to free him because John Connor is going to terminate the Terminator, which is kind of funny. You get that scene in the trailer where he's like, oh, you try to kill my mother, Sarah Connor, and you won't kill me, um, which isn't really a spoiler alert because it's actually in the trailers. That leads to this escape sequence where you see Marcus Wright take a motorcycle after knocking out one of the resistance fighters and leaps over it kind of uh, triple X style over the barbed wire fence and actually escapes, which I think was a pretty cool scene. You've even got Michael Ironside as sort of the resistance general. He's in a submarine that you see John Connor in in the beginning of the film. He's flying in a V2 Osprey and they're kind of going through this storm system and he orders them to kind of drop him down overneath the sub that they have in place to kind of monitor all the activity going on around the globe as well as what's going on in LA, which I think was pretty cool. And you see John Connor just kind of drop into the abyss and I thought that was a pretty sweet sequence 
was because you weren't really expecting that. It was kind of like a Call of Duty type situation. I think that John Connor in this movie is a little bit more human while he still has the gruff kind of badass fighter that he was kind of as a little kid in Terminator 2. He's a little bit more mature in this movie and he's able to take out the machines pretty easily. And you've got that cool opening sequence at the beginning, I think, which sets up the tone of this film where you see the nuke kind of go off. And before that, Resistance Fighter is going to take this facility that the Terminators have and you see the newer model, the T-800s, which is the Arnold Schwarzenegger model from the first Terminator film. This is all a prequel setting up the events that happen later on in the first Terminator movies, which this movie didn't do that well because of the fact that people like myself weren't really happy with it at first. So you never really got to see the time travel aspect of it. You did a little bit in Terminator Genesis, which I didn't really like that movie. That wasn't really my thing per se. I think this movie is fairly decent. I think that if you're a Terminator fan, you're definitely going to enjoy this movie. This movie definitely deserves either a six or a seven. Definitely doesn't deserve, you know, like a three or four rating, which I think most movie critics would probably give it. I know a lot of people are really harsh on this movie, but the visual effects are amazing. You know, this movie kind of blends the CG elements with the practical elements with the Terminator. In the fight sequence, the last one between Sam Worthington, John Connor, and Kyle Reese, there's a battle that takes place with a Terminator. While they don't use the, you know, animatronic Terminator that Stan Winston used, in the original Terminator films, they use sort of a mock-up where you kind of have the Terminator on, and on like a backpack set up and you can kind of see him walking around and stuff like he did in the original movies. I thought that was pretty unique. This movie is actually dedicated to Stan Winston because this took place after he passed away and sadly he wasn't able to see the finished product of this film, which I think is kind of sad in a way. Stan Winston was one of those guys that kind of used the practical effects in kind of a conjunction with the CG elements and he's the one that did the effects for Jurassic Park and all the animatronics for that and this guy has done countless other movies before that and I think he's one of the best kind of animatronics or was one of the best animatronics creators pretty much ever. He also did The Predator which I really love the first Predator movie. So yeah, um, I would have to give the visual effects of this movie about a 6 or a 7 as, as well as the story. I think the story of this movie is fantastic. I think the characters in this movie now are better than what I had originally saw when I first saw this movie as a kid. When I first left the theater with my dad seeing this movie as a kid, I was really disappointed. I felt really bad for seeing this movie and like I just wasted my time. But as I've gotten older, I've gotten to kind of respect it for what it is. And I think that audiences who have seen this movie before should definitely give this a chance. So that's why I'm going to give this about a 6 or a 7 rating. So I'm going to give it about a B. I think this really does deserve that B rating. It's definitely not an A by any means, but I definitely did enjoy myself while watching this, unlike The Last Jedi, which I'll probably talk about at some point again since it's the one year anniversary. So I hope you guys enjoyed this review series. I definitely wanted to talk about this because it's new on Netflix again. And if you guys haven't seen this movie, definitely check it out on Netflix and let me know in the comments section what you kind of thought about the movie. So as always, guys, rate, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.